Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the selective color adjustment layer. What does it do? How does it work? And how can you use it to get amazing colors in your images? And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the selective color adjustment layer. And by the end of this tutorial, you're going to know absolutely everything there is to know about the selective color adjustment layer. It is one of the most powerful and customizable adjustment layers when it comes to altering and manipulating colors. So this is going to be a little bit of a long one, but by the end, you're going to be a master at the selective color adjustment layer. So with that out of the way, guys, let's get started. Right guys, so before we go ahead and edit a photo, let's work in practice on how the selective color adjustment layer works, because that's the most important thing. There is quite a lot to it, so I'm gonna go through it step by step. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up the asset that we're going to be working with today. So the selective color layer works by adding and reducing colors using complementary colors in the color spectrum. And it does that by actually removing and adding colors to do with color balance. So we have these four colors you can see here. This is red, green, and blue. And we've also got black as well. These colors are your primary colors when it comes to photography. Every color in the color spectrum is made from these three colors. Now, if we go and have a look at the color wheel, you can see that these are all opposite. So we've got red at the top, we've got green on the right, and then we've got blue on the left. But as, as secondary colors, you've also got magenta, yellow, and cyan. And you can find these on the other side of this graph here. Now, let's say we want to add in some red. Now, when you add red to a photo, you're not just simply adding more red, you're also removing cyan. Because how the color works is by if you add a color, you indirectly are removing its complementary color. So let's go back to the uh, graph here. So let's say we want to add in some red. So let's move this little graph or move this dot over to the red. Because we're moving it over from white to red, you can see it's moving further away from cyan. So that means indirectly, when you introduce red into a photo, you're indirectly reducing the amount of cyan, which is a complementary color. So as you can see on this graph here, red is the opposite of cyan, green is the opposite of magenta, and blue is the opposite of yellow. And again, if we go ahead and move this towards the blue, you're gonna be removing yellow. If we go ahead and move this towards the green, you're removing magenta. If we go ahead and move this over towards cyan, you are removing red. So remember guys, every time you change or add a color, you are indirectly changing or removing the color that's opposite on the color wheel. So as we know that, let's say we go into our selective color adjustment layer. So the way to get to that is by going down to the bottom right hand corner, we've got our little adjustment layer icon, which looks like a circle. We're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna go ahead to selective color, which is the one found right at the bottom. So let's say we've got that yellow splodge here. Let's say we want to remove yellow. So what we can do is go to our top section here. This is our color channels. We can drop from, from red. Let's drop down to yellow. And we've got a nice, this is fairly easy. We've got a nice yellow slider. Now, if you move it over to the left, you're reducing colors. If you're moving it over to the right, you're adding colors. So we're gonna go ahead and move that over to the left. And as you can see, that has now made the yellow disappear. But if you noticed, it has also made the blue a little bit stronger. Because remember guys, opposites on the color wheel will always indirectly add, or if you're removing, removing colors from its opposite. So with that out the way, let's go and edit an actual photo, because that I find is the best way to learn. So let's go ahead and go ahead and open up the sample photo for today, which is again found from pexels.com, uh, sorry, from this is from unsplash.com. And again, guys, I'll make sure to put the link in the description. So let's go and have a look at the selective color adjustment layer. So it's split into two parts. The top part here is how you select the color. So let's say you want to choose red or select red in your photo. You go to this drop down section and you go ahead and select red. Then we've got the part here at the bottom. These are our four sliders. These how you change red. So if you go ahead and select red in the colors, 
that will select all the reds in the photos. And then the bottom here is how you manipulate them. So if you want to add cyan, add magenta, add yellow, or add blue, add green, or add red, you can do that using these sliders. And then at the bottom here, you've got whites that predominantly affect highlights, neutrals, which predominantly affect the midtones, and then you've got blacks, which predominantly affect the shadows and blacks. So that is how the selective color layer is broken down. So what I want to do is two things. Firstly, I want to overall boost the colors, but in a natural way, but I'm also going to want to change the green into a blue. And I'm gonna show you two ways of how a selective color layer works. So let's go down and add the selective color adjustment layer. So let's go ahead to the bottom right hand corner, click, and we're gonna go ahead to selective color, lovely. So what we want to do is overall give this color a, uh, give this photo a bit of a boost. And we predominantly want to affect the skin tones because I find the skin tones are, in this particular photo, quite undersaturated. So what we need to do is work out what colors exist within skin tones. Now, depending on what skin tones you're working with, if they're dark skin tones or lighter skin tones, you're always going to find two colors. You're going to find red and you're going to find yellow. So firstly, let's go to the reds. So now we know we want to add, add red to this photo. Let's go back to the uh, color wheel. If we want to add reds, so let's do this. Then if there isn't a red slider, let's say, what are we removing from the photo? We are removing, that's right, cyan. So if we go back to the photo, we've got our cyan slider here. So if we want to add red, we're going to remove cyan. So we're gonna take our red slider, we'll take our cyan slider over to the left. And as you can see, that has added more red to the skin tones. And if we do that again to the yellows this time, now this is fairly easy because there is a yellow slider enabled. So what we can do is simply just add yellow to the skin tones there as well. Lovely. So we've only changed two things so far on two color bands and already the skin tones look a lot brighter and more saturated. So if we do the before and we do the after, you can see there's already a slight change. So that's how you can actually boost colors is by either directly changing them or indirectly removing the opposite color to introduce colors. But what happens if you want to change colors in the photo? Well, this is a little bit different and this is all to do with color mixing. How the selective color layer works is by adding colors, but it also you add colors by mixing the colors that are previously on the photo. So let's say we've got this green, for example. If you wanna make something more blue, again, if we go back to the color wheel, if we've got something that's green and you want to make it blue, what you want to do is actually remove the colors again opposites. You want to remove reds, magentas and yellows. And that will take the color balance from the greens over towards the blues. So let's go ahead and change that. So in the greens, let's go down to the green icon here because this is predominantly going to affect this. Greens and cyans are predominantly found in this particular color here. We want to remove the opposite colors. So we've got, we want to remove reds, yellows, and magentas. So we've got a yellow slider here. Let's go ahead and remove that. And as you can see already, that's turned it to a bit more of a teal color. And let's go ahead and remove magentas a little bit. There we go, lovely. So now we've done that, let's go ahead and do it to the cyan ones as well. So we'll do it to the cyans and blues. So let's go ahead and do it to the cyans. Or again, guys, we look back at this, we want to remove yellows to add more blue. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to our yellow slider here, and then we're going to remove the yellows. And as you can see, it's now starting to turn to blue, lovely. And what you're gonna do is I want you to add in some cyan there as well. And what I might do is actually reduce the amount, or let's say it's increase the amount of magenta there as well. Wow, that is a very big difference, I must say. So if we do the before and we do the after, you can see that's turned to blue and the skin tones have got a lot brighter. So if we do that to the blues as well, so we're gonna go ahead and remove yellow. Wow, that is becoming a lot more vibrant now. And we go ahead and add some cyan. Lovely. Awesome. There we go, guys. So that is how the color layers work. But at the bottom, you've got three colors, which are neutral colors. You've got whites, which are predominantly the highlights in the photo. You've got neutrals, which are more of the mid-tones. And then you've got the blacks, and they are the shadows and the blacks found in the photo. 
So let's go ahead and select neutrals. These are your mid-tone colors. So if you want to create a global change to your photo, you can select the neutrals, highlights or shadows, and they will affect the highlights and the luminosity parts that you have selected. So let's say you want to create more of a blue to red color shift between the shadows and the blacks, let's say. So if we go ahead and select the blacks and we want to add in blue. So again, remember guys, blue is the opposite of yellow. So let's just reduce the yellow. As you can see, we're now adding blue to the shadow areas. And again, if we do the opposite, you can see we're now adding yellow to the shadow areas. So you can use the selective color to actually color grade your photos, either in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So if there isn't a slider there available that you're after, just remember guys, always go back to the color wheel and have a look at what is the opposite of it. So if we wanna add in yellow, we simply reduce the amount of blue and that will automatically introduce the right amount of color for yourself. And again, guys, that is how the selective color layer works. I wanna keep on emphasizing this so you guys really understand that all colors have opposites and it's how it's balanced or how it introduce or manipulate colors in your photo. But what happens, let's say, if you just want to affect a certain part of the photo, let's say uh, you want to affect the sky, but not the trees, or you want to affect, let's say, the, the, the um, a bench, let's say, that's bright blue, and you want to change its slightly different color to, let's say, the grass. Well, that's when you can use layer masks, and layer masks are your friend when it comes to Photoshop. So, what I want to do in this particular case is, we've got a lovely blue, uh, the paint strips on her face, but let's change them back to green again to add a little bit more of a difference to this photo, because at the moment, the colors are looking a bit samey. So let's go and introduce a new color, let's introduce green. So what we're gonna do, instead of uh, trying to do that in one adjustment layer, let's create a second adjustment layer. So let's go down to the bottom right-hand corner, and let's go ahead and choose selective color. Now, we want to affect the darker blues found in that area. So what we want to do is firstly select that area. So let's go ahead and create a layer mask so it's only affecting the parts of the photo that we want. So every time you make a selective color or any adjustment layer for that matter, you will get a layer mask. And that is this white box you'll find in your layers panel. What you want to do is you actually want to change that to black because white reveals and black conceals. What that means is white is opaque and the effect is 100% working. And if it's black, it means it's invisible and it's not working. So that's how you can choose certain parts of the photo so to select certain colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Command I and that will invert those colors from white to black. Then we're gonna head and zoom into the part that you want to change. So I'm gonna change this part first. And then what you want to do is uh, go to the brush tool and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint in white. So I've got white as my foreground color. So I'm gonna make sure I've selected white. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint in with a fairly soft brush that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that area here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this area as well. I'm gonna paint this area just near her lip. And I'm gonna go up, there's one more piece in near her forehead and we'll go ahead and select it like so. Now a handy tool in Photoshop, if you want to see the areas that you've selected in your layer mask, if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on that little thumbnail, it will show you where you've painted and you can see the areas that you have selected. So this is the only, those white spots there are the only parts of the photo that are gonna be affected by this new selective color adjustment layer. So we wanna bring these back to green again. So let's go ahead and double click on that. It'll bring up our properties. Let's drag these properties out this time. What we're going to do is we want to go ahead and target those particular colors. So let's go ahead to blue. Now we want to add in green. So what we want to do is remember guys, if we want to add in green, we want to remove the amount of magenta. So we're going to go to our magenta slider and we're going to head and increase that. And then what we're going to do is also increase the amount of yellow because again, yellow is the opposite of blue if we want to try and remove that. And we're going to do that for the blue channel. Let's actually reduce cyans as well. That's a good idea. Uh, let's go into the cyan channel and do the same. So increase the amount of magentas. And we're going to increase the amount, oh, sorry, re reduce the amount of magentas, increasing yellow. My mistake there. Sorry about that, guys. And then we're going to increase the amount of yellow. And then we're going to decrease that there as well. So as you can see, we have now brought that back to it being green again. 
Again, by removing its opposite colors. So we know magenta is opposite, so we're gonna re reduce magenta to increase yellow. And as you can see, it's only affecting those parts that we wanted. If we went ahead and actually did it to the whole entire photo, we would again change that back to it being green again. So if I actually just simply remove that, you can see the whole photo has turned to green. But because we activated that layer mask, it has only selected those parts of the photo. So layer masks are really helpful in that regard. And pretty much there it is, guys. That is how the selective color adjustment layer works. It uses opposite colors and it directly and indirectly adds and removes colors by using the color wheel. If you do want help, I would just simply download a simple color wheeled photo from Google, which is exactly what I've done. Draw a little circle like which I've done and you can drag that around. So it really helps you out to work out how the effect works. You want to introduce red? Remember guys, simply reduce cyan. And there we go guys, that is how the selective color adjustment layer works in Photoshop.